art is not easy. And if you guys are anything like me, at some point or another, you had a really great idea in your head, and then upon completing them, you kind of felt a little more impartial about it, and that it didn't quite reach up to its full potential. Well, in this video, I'm going to take you through a few examples from my supporter and patron, Dean, and break down all the ways in which I feel balance held them back. This is going to include how staging an image can communicate the important aspects of it to reach its full potential. It's going to talk about how framing conventions play a role into this as well. And that no matter how much detail and technical skill you have, you could still botch a design and wash all of that away. I'm Tyler Edlin. I do AAA game art. I professionally mentor and instruct artists and I do some art direction. This video will include a paid promo by Artwide, and let's begin. This footage was provided with permission, of course, from Dean, and you can find links to his work in the description below. Now, this is a fantastic image. It's one of Dean's strongest. I really like the way it's going. First off, I mean, this is an amazing piece of storytelling. The rendering here, you know, the technical skill on display is absolutely fantastic from the materials to the brushwork to the setup overall. What I really want to get into with this one is a little bit of what I kind of call, in this case, less is more. Everything's very cleanly presented. Everything is directly presented in terms of the information and the layout. I actually want to simplify part of the information in this scene in terms of like the structural shapes of light versus shadow. That's kind of what I'm loosely kind of going over here. There's an equal emphasis of action, you know, within this foreground, middle ground area, as well as the stuff that are going on beyond the frame, like with this forest and the pagoda. Well, I do like those elements. And I think they don't, they don't necessarily take away anything from this picture. I do think this is a great example of like having a little bit less out there can emphasize the immediacy and the importance of what's going on, you know, underneath, you know, this sort of structure where this, this little skirmish is taking place. And a common way a lot of us can kind of approach this is again, find the heart of the picture, go to the heart of the picture and you can either exaggerate certain aspects or features and now this exaggeration can come in the form of pulling color temperature making things feel a little warmer or things a little bit cooler for that added emphasis or you can simply just fight the amount and level of detail here i'm going to really do my best to show you all the same elements i'm just going to prioritize their importance and let the lighting kind of flow with this narrative here this is a very dramatic image it's a very dangerous image it's it's also very excitement and kind of critical there's a lot of drama going on and really when it comes to good placement of certain you know characters as well as how the lighting is used in a scene uh, it can really add a lot of subtlety to a scene and you know, like anything with these images, the physical behavior is tied to the emotional state. And I'm trying to make this lighting also apply to the emotional state of this image. And and it's a balance game, you know, at the end of the day with this. So it's not so much a technical skill, you know, on, on, on Mike's behalf that, that I think we could really improve it here. It's just fudging around a little bit of these details to nudge it toward a slightly more dramatic maybe you could you could put this word i don't like to use this word often you know cinematic because cinema does this very very well almost sometimes to a fault but i mean that's what makes it look cinematic when you really can like de-emphasize certain shapes you play to silhouettes you use loads you know of folk uh, fog machines smokers things like this you play up atmosphere essentially this also works in concept art illustration and a lot of type of fantasy art as well so i'm again making this slightly more cinematic to kind of create a little bit more drama for these immediate characters 
I want to add a little bit more of this light in a very subtle way, kind of blooming through, you know, from the background. And to do that, I need to de-emphasize some of the actual details in these shadow areas. And again, that's going to balance out this information on the light that we're going to play up. So I'm, I sapped a little bit of color, a little bit of brightness out of this whole thing just so I can allow this lighting to kind of intercept some of that information. What that's really gonna do here is allow the viewer to grasp the most important things quicker, and we're gonna use a little bit of our imagination to kind of get in there and interpret maybe what some of those details are, because we're kind of creating balance by means of focusing on you know less of that information it's a great strategy it works and i do this a lot too with my own images you have to let me know if you guys do this as well where like i i have a habit of over detailing a large part of my images and i do have to put that old filter hat that editor's hat back on you know when we're reflecting and reviewing uh, not only my students images but my own because it's really tough to do it and I think a lot of us have a tendency to just want to put as much meaningful details in everywhere we can but yeah sometimes I do feel focusing in this case now in color temperature we cool we kind of made everything a little bit cooler to to balance out that really nice warm light that we're going to put on the characters faces for the focal point just kind of really hitting that home like we could do like a little bit on this this bald guy with all these muscles, you know, in the for you know, in the foreground, just to bring a little bit of that light around there to make it a little more three dimensional. See, just like on the core of the forms, like the part that's facing forward, I try to get a little bit of that, but just not quite as much, you know, as there was originally. And I think that adds personally a little bit of that drama to it. Guys, it took me a long time to get to this stage in my career. I'd say well over 12 years and I have massive school loans in tow as well. Now, when I was training, I wish there were programs like ArtWatt to affordably expedite my progress and growth. And right now, there's a 20% sale on quarterly and yearly memberships. Use the code AWADMORE to start saving today. And with these savings, you can jump right in and get access to the weekly assignments for drawing and painting. And these are constantly varied and come with classroom sessions to supplement the assignments as well. Now, this is not going to replace the hard work you still need to put in, but it does offer manageable structure that also has a great community. A large part of the problem that hinders growth with students from what I see is the structure and the lack of feedback loops. And ArtWad can certainly help in both of these areas. ArtWad is optimized for mobile use. So if you're anything like me, when my kids are in daycare, when they're in their dance classes and I'm waiting for them to pick them up, I can just start training on the go. Don't miss out today. Now here we have another really cool idea. A samurai version of Venom battling some Yakuza in a subway. I absolutely love that sort of thesis. I love that concept. But this is a great example of that. No amount of rendering can kind of save or salvage a bad design. So again, this is a great idea, but it's hardly optimized in my opinion. And this is the toughest type of feedback that I, I give and I and I take a lot of consideration when making a recommendation like this, but this falls into that category of, look, Henry, we got to lose the leg. Yep. There's going to be a sacrifice here. And in this case, I really recommend to get the most out of an idea like this. Probably it's best to start over. Now, if you got some good ideas, you find yourself, looking at this and like, what the heck am I thinking? And you have an idea there? Let me know. I'd love to know it. But in this case, it's everything is not being e emphasized the way that we'd like it to. And, and it falls out of balance quickly from that. This is a large part in kind of, you know, staging the scene to kind of really communicate the best 
uh, you know, message for here. Now, like, I know I'm going to switch the narrative up a little bit here with my idea. This, the, the previous scene, the original kind of takes place after the battle. But what I, what I want to go with on this one is that, like, we could probably make a more striking image, a more visually kind of diverse one, too, if we kind of go in the heat of the battle, like almost like mid swipe of that sword. Not to say that the last idea was terrible or that, you know, it, that ver a version of that image can't exist. But since I'm starting over, I want to I want to play up this drama and this action a little bit. So that's a little bit of the reasoning uh, behind this. And what I'm going to do is like do a really quick sketch. So, of course, this quick sketch is not going to look anything like the awesome details that were on displayed in the previous one. But it's, it's going to hopefully get the idea across. Uh, the last idea was very evenly lit. It just, in my opinion, showed way, way too much. The light was really bright, which kind of pulled the, you know, the balance away, from, you know, in regards to the drama of it. And I think just kind of going a little bit darker, playing up the shapes, the patterns and the rhythms, right? The very essence of what makes a design work. We're going to go back to the basics on this. So, so and I, I'm hopefully using like these various colors and stuff. You guys can kind of see the vision I have for an idea like this. But I want to frame, you know, that whole middle section of the picture with that train car as it's just like kind of pulling up right in the middle of the subway. We're going to use those perspective points, right? The vanishing points that go down below. These could be signs. These could be overhead lights. But I want to have like an open door on that train with these Yakuza dudes just piling up, you know, and then someone cues the music and then they start playing, you know, let the bodies hit the floor that, that you know, a really cool old, you know, song. And then Venom starts laying loose. So we got guys coming up the stairs, you know, on the right dudes f getting flung left and right, you know, coming toward the camera, going away from the camera. That can make up the core idea here. Now we could really try to find a way, and this is what I'm quickly doing here with this very kind of rough and tumble airbrush, is just to try to find the rhythms of high, you know, beats. I'm trying to find the beats of the image with the lights versus the dark. And then from there, you could get like a little bit more literate, uh, literal, a little more literal with the actual lighting. So, okay, Venom's going to work good as a dark shape. You know, and we could silhouette him using lighter ones. So every image comes down to like, is this a light on dark or a dark on light sort of image? And yeah, of course, Venom's a black character. We're going to we're gonna play into that. It'd be really tough to kind of reverse that role on him, I think, in this picture. So we're going to go with the flow on that. So we got the guys getting tossed around. My anatomy skills are on full display here. Yeah, a little shameful here, but I'm going to block out some of these shapes and we're going to get that light kind of coming to, to just gingerly <laughs> silhouette, you know, Venom. I think that's going to really help it. And it, lighting adds so much to, to the staging of a scene. And that's ultimately really critical in what and how you're communicating something. Uh, so, again, this is not at all you know, a, a slant on the original technical skill of the piece. It was pretty well rendered. There was a lot of, there was technical problems with pr the perspective, like in the scale. I don't want to really get into that. I know there's always somebody in the comments, you didn't even talk about this aspect. Now, I'm, I'm really just trying to, <laughs> trying to keep the, um, the conversation really one, one note in terms of the balance for now. But yeah, I'm trying to make a lot. This kind of looks like a weird Spider-Man version of it. Maybe I should draw Venom more. It's a little fugly. But yeah, see, I just want just the right amount of light to hit some of these thugs. Just the amount of patterns and rhythms to, to go across the floor and the ceiling to really push that power, you know, on Venom. And that's why we're on a, going on a much lower angle. The other position was nonchalantly shoved, like, just above Venom. And by camera choice alone, that takes a lot of the heat, a little bit of the action out of the scene, right? Way too much. So I don't want to take any wind out of Venom's, you know, away from him at all. I want I want the power to be there. So that's the reason behind framing and, and balancing it a little bit more like this, where, you know, even going with like a little bit more of like a, a Dutch angle, which 
creates a sense of imbalance in a way but like that's going to add to the uneasiness of a scene like this and how visceral it really can be and as you can see it's like again for the most part it's the same idea but we're just kind of rearranging the pieces right in a little bit of a different way all right in this final example for today we're going to attempt to strike a balance to of shapes and light to create a greater impact. Now, sometimes what I like to do with feedback is pull up a, f a few really good references of what I aim to do since you never really push things to that level within you know, a feedback video. I grabbed some art by the talented Greg Rutzkowski and former guest Andy Walsh that really play up the importance of silhouettes in a, in a, in a piece like this and how those can be balanced and play off each other and to really use lighting like we did in the first one to either create emphasis and to de-emphasize. Now this is already like pretty dark, right? Like there's, there is a highly nice ele uh, emphasis on, on the, the Hellboy character. But I, what I really wanna do is to play up the drama of this villain here. And I think that can work a lot better if we can not necessarily see more of him, but play up how dangerous he is using the, his shape and form. So I'm, I'm kind of selecting in these negative shapes in and around that arm. And I'm just adding a little bit of this like denser atmosphere. Like there is like a fog machine on a set. That's making the arm shape really pronounced quite a bit more like the wings on the dragons up there or in Tyler Jacobson's piece with the fire in Pillars. And then what I want to do is I, I do kind of slightly change the pose a little bit of uh, the Hellboy character. I, I think it's great, uh, but it's it's also I don't think it kind of comes off as that that whole power stance situation. Like it, it's like he's just kind of casually walking in uh, with, you know, with the legs being really narrow. I, I want to play, you know, into the stereotype of a, of a power character like this with the aggression and the strength and you add some more masculine shapes to it. It was just looking a little too feminine in my opinion. Now what I wanna do is liven up the composition a little bit as well. So the other thing I'm gonna really do with the scene like this is extend that canvas. So I do wanna create a little balance in terms of visual weight of these characters. Like right now it's, it's pretty heavy on the left with a lot of that weight actually going to Hellboy. So I think I can create a better balance between the two of them right by like I said adding a little bit of that canvas in and you know you'd have to go in and kind of paint the white square which which I'm not going to do today but I think just in terms of like the, the scale and scope of the image I do think that could help so this is this is not too bad of a fix in this image you know it's fixing a few shapes we're playing into that light you know it's it this is a, a game at this stage of push and pull and of course you can use shapes of light to simplify certain things to create an impact on others. This is just a little bit more of a severe case of what we were doing in part one, as well as a few rearranging of the, the components that well, we did a lot of that in part two. So it's a good, it's a good sort of case study to kind of end on here. But yeah, this is a pretty good balance of just really good technical skills and when just slightly modifying some of the components, whether it's the warm and the cool, the shapes of light and dark, and of course the emphasis on details, it can become, you know, quite a little bit more balanced. I also recommend, which I didn't really kind of cover in this, playing up like, like I was kind of showing like a, a warmer sort of light coming from above to like emphasize the forms on the chins and like the under the knee and the pecs to push the shapes of like both the legs a little bit. But yeah, you guys will have to let me know what you think down below. Do you, you think Dean's off to a great start with these? Do you have any ideas for him? Did I completely botch some of these uh, feedbacks? Let me know.